focused on saving people, saving wounded, saving lives. As the situation unfolded, mere survival became questionable. The cool-headed Murphy quickly took charge and led by example. The reinforced Chinese launched a bloody counterattack. Well, first of all, I called for help, and I got the Charlie Company. They sent them out, and I had you know, now I had a, another group to be responsible for. But I needed people to carry stretchers. There was very few people that came out of my platoon back, you know, and uh, the other platoons too. From what I seen, uh, he just kept he just kept going. He w wouldn't stop, you know. He was an inspiration. Several times, Murphy deliberately exposed himself to enemy fire and pulled the wounded to safety. One sergeant who witnessed Murphy's heroics said, it would be impossible to know how many trips he made under enemy fire to pull guys to safety. In the heat of the battle, you do things like I can remember. One of these came out with Charlie Company, was a big, boy, I would say a big country boy. And I told him to get a body and he, he froze and he said, sir, I've never touched the dead man. And I said, you better touch that pretty quick or you're going to be dead if we don't get out of here. He was afraid that there were wounded men on the hill that had not yet been recovered because they were scattered throughout the hill. And so he rounded up another group of uh, Marines and they went back and they swept the hill. Jerry Murphy himself personally wounded uh, in the face, the chest, the shoulders. Uh, shrapnel wounds repeatedly, he continued to direct that evacuation and resistance. Murphy's left side was soaked in blood. He ignored the numerous wounds and focused only on getting that Marine to safety. I didn't even know I had a bullet through this hand until I grabbed the one stretch and started carrying. All of a sudden I looked down and the bullet had gone through everything. But your, your, your uh, emotions, adrenaline, is to where you, you don't notice, notice stuff like that because you got a mission. You got a mission to bring men back. I know he was, he was hit very bad and he still kept going. Kept going and until all his men were back in our parameter, you know. It seems like he wasn't hurt, but uh, he was. He was something else. He was, yeah, uh, I, don't, I don't know really how to describe it, but uh, everything he did, uh, he did it right. And I say if uh, Lieutenant Murphy wouldn't have, wouldn't have gone up and we had already gotten the word to withdraw, I guess they would have wiped us out. Mm -hmm. In the chaos, Murphy ditched his weapons to better execute his rescue efforts. But I was more concerned with getting stretchers out of there than I was with firing his arms and saving them. During a surprise encounter with Chinese attackers, the now unarmed Murphy found a Browning automatic rifle and used it to keep the enemy pinned down while the rescue effort continued. Wounded and exhausted, Murphy wasn't quite finished. He swept the Ungak hillside to make certain no Marines were left behind, dead or alive. And the last one, the machine gun group, and they were all dead. And I did a lot of dragging. I remember dragging some clothes off and I thought, what a thing, a man has to be embarrassed when he's dead, you know. But you gotta get him out. You gotta get the body out. As darkness covered the hill, Murphy refused medical treatment until he was assured all other casualties had been treated. He was the last man to leave the mountain. Fortunately, very fortunately, very blessed that we got everybody. I, I, I've never been able to figure out why there wasn't somebody that we missed, but we didn't. I ended up with about eight different wounded areas that I didn't know very much about them. I was the last ambulance to go out. By the end of the battle, 
The 5th Marines had suffered over 100 casualties. The enemy toll was over 400 killed and hundreds more wounded. Rescuing his people. That to me, that's what it is. That was, that was again, that was the most important thing on his mind is get those troops out of there and get them back safely. After attaining his master's degree in education, Murphy joined his brother in a business venture in New Mexico. In 1974, he sold his interest and went to work for the Veterans Administration as a counselor, where he worked until retirement. Today, he is a volunteer at the Veterans Hospital in Albuquerque. Still an inspiration, a leader, and quick to lend a helping hand. Today is the uh, ninth, right? Uh -huh. Your second floor. Second floor. Yeah. Okay. Murphy. Como esta? Como esta con ellos? Good. Look at here. The, uh, the elevator is on the other side of the waiting area here. Okay. All right. You're going to see a sign like that up there? Uh-huh. You see that H-A-S on there. Okay. Go on third floor. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Virginia, okay, Murphy. Take care. He loves his veterans, and he'll do anything for his veterans. He'll go above and beyond to help them even now. There's just so many things that are so special about him. Uh, I think his humility for when in this can you turn it off? Jerry Murphy has dedicated his whole life to veterans. His action in Korea was not a heroic action to defeat the enemy, but a heroic action to spare his men. Well, I consider the situations that I were in, uh, there are, uh, that I was really blessed by God with uh, a number of troopers that I had. Uh, why I did it, all I know is I wanted to save some lives. I didn't want to keep anybody from getting hurt. Other than that, I can't uh, give you a key word or a key sentence about this is what a hero is. I don't know. I really don't. I see him quite often, and uh, every day I go see him, it's a big day for me. And I can see for him too. There's a bond there, you know. You always gotta be a leader, you know? And uh, Lieutenant Murphy did that. Uh, I guess I would follow him into hell.